Classroom of the Elite Season 3 Episode 4 was fucking insufferable. <laughs> Yamagod did pop off of it. Let's see what Mr. H. Brandon has to say. Brain rot. And if we don't... Classroom of the Elite is suffering brain rot. And if we don't remove said rot soon enough, I worry for the show's health. I am, of course, talking about Yamauchi. Do needs to be truck cooned ASAP. I he is... So far, I've been memeing about Black Room Yamauchi. Sometimes he's funny, you know. Oh, he did Marikita. He was the actual master plan of season one, you know, the, the island arc. Because it wasn't, it wasn't Ayanakochi that planned it, no, it was Yamauchi. It's fun to meme around with characters like this. But last episode, when he told Michan to shut up, I felt like something changed in me. This guy is a fucking menace. And right now, I enjoy it when his dumb idiot tendencies are like ruining other people. Like when he fucking ran into, you know, he just kicked Arisa's cane. But when he's doing it to us, it's like, this guy needs to fucking die. I refuse to apologize for that level of slander because this dude is insufferable. When the rumors start spreading, whether or not you were involved or not i don't think so i don't think he's he's smart enough to go the route of being a master <laughs> manipulator if so he gets master manipulated but he's so confident it almost seems like he is the fucking leader no props to him but it doesn't matter whether he's just an innocent bystander who gets ooh, i just i just want to make sure you know it's not true you're a prostitute you like who you you hate who it's like Dude, it was going like bap, 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 like non-stop smiling. Like as soon as people got the fucking messages on their phone, right? Their bulletin board or whatever. Their fucking Reddit, their Twitter, right? All these rumors spread. Everyone's like, this is horrible. No way. And Yamauchi is like, awesome. Yeah. It's like, this guy is unhinged. Obviously, the way rumors spread like a wildfire. Yeah. And how dumbass kids just start latching on to it. Yeah. The fact that we were so good with class unity. Hondo. Only for a character like him to almost... Two fucking seasons of building up the framework. Ayana Koji spent two fucking seasons establishing the framework, carrying everybody, manipulating everybody behind the scenes to unite us. And finally, we have a sense of unity, which has now been crushed within a single episode. Not even throughout the entire episode. It was just three minutes of the last part of the last episode. He crushed it effortlessly. Black room activities. Immediately be the first to kind of take a sledgehammer to it. And just how <laughs> everyone's just like, bro, can you chill? And he just... There's something about his face. There's something so insufferable about yes. Yamauchi's face. Yes, and it's intentional. Because it's his, the shape of his eyebrows and the absolute confidence he makes with his eyes and the grin he has. As if he knows better. As if he is just so aware and enlightened, but he's not. He's so unaware. He doesn't know he's getting manipulated by Arisu. He doesn't need, I don't know. And here's the thing, right? Like, why do you think doing this to your class is good? Unless you're trying to intentionally like break down this class in favor of getting points from Arisu so that you can transfer over or some shit. If that's the deal, okay, that might make sense. But we know goddamn well that's not the case. This idiot is just fucking starting shit for the sake of starting shit. Because he's dumb as fuck. That you just want to see him get truck coom. And I doubt I'm the only one feeling that level of hatred for this character. But he is... Even EK got mad, dude. This is the idiot trio. This is his... Friend group, Yamauchi, EK, and Sudo. Technically, there is like fucking Hondo and Hakase, the professor, but it doesn't really matter. EK got mad enough to start trying to punch Yamauchi. That's how bad it is right now. Brain rot. He is so pointless, so insufferable that I... Pointless? I'm not sure. I think there is a big point to all this. But insufferable? Yes. I want to see him fail. Now, don't get it twisted. It's good to have characters that make you heated and make you upset. And I think he serves that purpose. I just want to see him fail. I want to see him absolutely be crushed under pressure. The weight of this class. I want to see them all rise together. <sighs> the way that I envisioned Yamagod's character to develop was like this. I thought that... I never anticipated him to be malicious towards us, right? I thought that this is a mean character. We all know he's a fucking idiot. We all know that he has ridiculous lines that's so self-unaware, but 
in that sense, it's kind of funny. He becomes a very funny character if you don't take it too seriously, right? And there are some great moments where he starts to pop off against other classes, like effortlessly crushing the queen of the school in the first episode, right? By tripping, fucking <laughs> knocking her cane over. Stuff like that's very funny to me. So I thought that this character would go on to do more stuff like that, like un unintentionally getting manipulated by Anakoji to, you know, say a bunch of lies, fake news to kind of like hype himself up and the rest of the class against other classes and for us to benefit off of that. But no, we're going a completely different route right now, and I, I'm, not, I'm not really a fan of it. Well, I'm not really a fan as in, I don't like the way that Yamagata is being developed because now I have to hate him. But in terms of the spicy content that's coming out of it, oh, it's fucking good. And toss that dude into the garbage pail because he's just absolute cancer that needs to be purged. Kushida too, by the way. Well, what a great episode of Classroom of the Elite. We have a Valentine's Day-focused episode that has no right being as good as it is. And, like, I forgot entirely about the Valentine's focus because, like, again, the last three minutes, it was, like, the most hyped shit I've seen in a while. And then they end with the cherry on top, which yeah. is that brain rot and the interesting uh, rumor that is now spreading. And honestly, how the class's unity is going to repair after being uh, kind of shattered at this point. Now, I have a full live reaction to today's Check him out on Patreon, guys. Lead episode over on my Patreon. So if you would like to see my full link of thoughts up there over there, if you're interested. This was a really good episode. I think, honestly, episodes one and two were good. They were enjoyable. It's classroom of the week. It's always going to be enjoyable at worst. I think episode three took it up a notch. And honestly, this one, for me, a lot more interesting, which is weird because... As much as I do like QT Valentine's Day's kind of special episodes. I don't care. I want to see Hondo talk. I want to see NPC get involved in the drama. I really don't look at a show like this and say, yeah, I definitely want to see that in Classroom of the Elite. So this episode, in a way, has no right being as good as it is because you would assume a character as disconnected as Aino Koji from literally everyone who the connections he forms in the show are basically situational events that he's triggering the flags like i said like he's basically a visual, visual novel, novel character a really well written visual novel character but he's just manipulating this world like a visual novel trying to set flags for characters to go to objectives that he wants him to do so characters wanting to fall in love or have fallen in love with him and him just being so deadpan like i don't give a shit i mean an episode like this on paper shouldn't be interesting when everyone else is kind of acting like your typical generic it's Valentine's Day. Am I going to get chocolates? I wonder who's going to give me chocolates. Oh. Sudo and EK did not get chocolates. Oh, did you get chocolates? It's like none of that mattered. I can't believe Susan didn't prepare anything for Sudo, man. That's so mean. He could at least fucking, you know, it's his dog. At least like have, prepare some fucking treats, right? right? Like that stuff should be so out of place. But when you have a character like him who is such a good MC, so many thoughts going through his head. His face ranges from unenthusiastic to unenthusiastic. It's, <laughs> it's just the same face every time. Wow, that's crazy. I would have never thought. I'm so happy right now. Amazing. He's slow in the head to, oh my God, is he going to stab us? Like those are his facial reactions. And it's fantastic because no one can properly read him. And I like the idea of him almost getting tailed and followed because when you look at like a situation from afar, him meeting up with Kay could very much be perceived as like, oh, they're mm. manipulating behind the scenes, this or that. And then it just kind of becomes, I'm giving you chocolate, which then becomes, oh, wait, what if it's actually like they're, they're handing something special out? Like what if it's not chocolate in the bag, but maybe this. And we what was in the rice porridge, man? What was in the fucking rice porridge? I know we're getting a little ahead of ourselves right now, but like, what the fuck was in the rice porridge that he gave out to Ichinose? Was that poison? Is he trying to fucking, you know, make Ichinose super sick too? What you, what's going on? Yeah, probably my favorite moment, at least of this anime season of Classroom of the Elite, which it's so simple, but it's the way this man goes from kind of like having a peaceful-ish conversation with the two of them to then Hashimoto the going in hand slam against a wall being like, yes. wow, you go out with me. And I love how he very clearly was trying to get a reaction out of Aino Koji. Just like Ryun was trying to do to Aino Well, you know, he was like talking to Suzune. But every time we we're doing that in season two and one, he's technically trying to get a reaction out of Aino Koji. So Hashimoto doing the same thing right now just to see, will he react? No. He just walks away. Like, don't talk to her like that. You know, basically just trying to prove something. And as soon as she's uncomfortable, and he, like, gives the side eye, like, what are you going to do now, bro? And he, before he can even finish his sentence, I know Koji just turns around and says, No, nah, I'm out. Later. And his Bye. reaction, like, what? It's just, there's something so amazing about characters acting as you would expect in a situation like this. 
characters spying on people trying to figure out the big objectives characters just being generically flirty which don't get a mistake and i like our girl but all these situations they are very typical anime scenes and then there's Aino koji who just says yeah bye i, I, don't, care. I don't care and then just dips his entire reason for going over to someone who's six home is because he needs to keep certain flags active in order to get to the objective that he's aiming for and what's the objective to get each snow honami to ask for help she won't ask for help she's being too strong how do we break her down more rice porridge poison it for it's just i don't understand how this show continues to keep me so interested because as much as i do like those kind of like valentine's day flirty episodes in anime it's for certain types of anime and i don't really look at a show where i'm like this man's manipulating everyone and any genuine relationship he might have is done so for an objective as it stands. It shouldn't work on paper, yet it's... It's good, because I, in, in my opinion, even the pool episode, I think, is a good example. There are moments where, because of the tone of this show was so sinister and dramatic and heavy and mind games and manipulation and all that, that when you get regular moments like a Valentine's Day episode, like, imagine if there was like a fucking uh, uh, summer festival episode or something, right? Even then, I'll add in all these different like um, rom-com events, culture festival, whatnot. It'll be super interesting due to the nature of the characters in Classroom the Elite and how they operate in that context. Because, again, of the contrast between what those like rom-com slice of life events are supposed to be, but... Put in the sociopathic characters like Anakoji in it, it just makes for good content. So captivating. And like I say, like this show, despite having one of the more obvious criticisms for its anime adaptations, I'm of the fence, even though I haven't read the source. It keeps killing it, man. People saying, like, pacing wise, we would be three more seasons down the line to get to this point if we. And again, I don't think that's a very good, like, a compelling argument to say, like, to justify why this pacing is this fast. I would be perfectly fine if we took another three seasons to get to the point where we're at right now in the anime. Because it's all about the journey and about enjoying this content series as much as possible, rather than racing to the finish line. You know, adapted all the internal thoughts. That wouldn't work for an anime. But there's always stuff that is left out that could work for an anime. And I very much recognize that pacing-wise, they do leave out some big moments that would be nice to see or maybe flesh certain things out. But I say still, this anime doesn't leave me confused on character motivations. And it doesn't leave me like feeling like I can't understand the anime. But mm. it's interesting. How it gives you enough. It gives you enough and delivers on the most important scenes to make you as an enemy only to follow what's going on pretty well. Yeah, I agree. How much of a botched anime adaptation it's universally criticized as, yet it only gets popular, like more so with each season. And Numbers really don't lie. Because I think it definitely goes to show just how good this story is that something that's so meaty in internal thoughts and really getting inside I know Koji's head very clearly from its light novel it still translates so well because I think the studio does such a good job with the facial reactions of Aino Koji. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. What do, you, what do you mean facial reactions of Aino Koji? Hold up. So your justification of why the anime does so well, despite cutting out so much light novel content, is because of Aino Koji's ex immaculate facial expressions. Okay, let him cook. And how I think his body reactions and his posture and just how he examines and observes things. So does he just mean how Anakoji remains to be this cool, calculating, cold robot in the outside whenever shit happens? He does such a good job at really getting inside his head. So then when he does certain actions in this world, you still have a pretty good idea of what he's thinking. It's kind of a situation of show don't tell and some shows that works with. And I think a character dr driven show like this, I think class familiar. Yeah, show don't tell in terms of Anakoji's plans. You never really know, right? He just kind of just does shit. Just for example, the porch stuff. What's going on there? Who really knows? There was a fucking five second in the elevator where we were just panning at Anakoji's head while he's holding the fucking porridge. Is that supposed to be some kind of monologue where he's thinking about how he's about to poison each no say i don't fucking know but still the way that i'm always guessing about what anakoji's thinking and he has this cold expressionless face you know not much of a facial reaction but it really makes you think what is he thinking right now with this blank face that he's doing what is he actually thinking yeah yeah i could see that for sure he really does it well i mean like i said class unity was looking pretty good and then everything kind of went up in smokes it's got yeah, my needed for a little longer. I mean, we had the <laughs> phone call last week. We don't know who did that phone call. Probably the same people who just did the message board. Who did the phone call? The same people that did the message board. I think these could be separate plot lines. It could be, Brandon could be right. 
But I want to go with the idea and entertain the thought that it is Aonokoji's dad's faction and a secret agent the spies. This is my headcanon right now because I just want to believe that this is true and that there exists characters in this show that are seemingly NPCs that are white room double agents. I just want to believe that, man. Kind of slander. It's going to get heated. It's going to get spicy. And honestly, I, I wouldn't be shocked if school fights are breaking out. And honestly, good. We haven't had violence in a while. Come on. I want some fucking fights. It's probably going to work out. And I think our boy went into that class today thinking he was going to have an easy time. And now he's like, God damn it. I hate these people even more than ever before. And uh, like I said, that dude's <laughs> bag, he's brain rot. He's cancer. And he needs to go. Let me know what you thought. He needs to go, huh? Does Yamagod have to go? Is this irredeemable for Yamagod? <sighs> it's just unfortunate because I feel like we could have used Yamagod as a pretty good tool in cases where he's good at just hyping shit up by lying, inflating things, and making it seem like he's greater than life. I do enjoy him for moments like that, but the moment he told Michan to shut up, something changed in me. If you haven't seen the reaction, check it out. I just stop right there, and I'm like, no, I will not fucking allow this. Not Michan. She's way too cute, but you guys started spamming Giga Chats because Yamagod just being a blatant dick like that with zero hesitation <laughs> kind of is a giga chat i'm kind of all over the place with those characters but hey that's another video from mr h brandon please go like the video sub to the channel if you did and until next time take care